Hey guys, say you are a mobile or APM expert and you have an upcoming interview. So do you know what are the possible errors you face while using APM or what are the most difficult scenarios to test with APM? Welcome to Code and Box Automation Lab. This is Shoreful. In this lecture, we are going to see top 20 APM mobile automation interview question and answers. Let's go. So first question. What is or why is APM? It's a very basic question. So we all know APM is an open source mobile automation tool. It works across platform like iOS, Android and so on. It works on native, hybrid and mobile web apps. It supports Selenium WebDriver API library. So if you are familiar with Selenium automation, so you are, you are pretty much 50% already know about the APM and from the Selenium library different methods you can call and you can use exactly the same way you used to write the script in Selenium. It also has a language flexibility gives an option to use you know any language like Selenium as Java, Python, C Sharp, Ruby and etc. So this is the very basic and fundamental knowledge about the APM. Next question. The list of the limitation of APM or what is the limitation of APM? Or do you know any limitation of APM? Of course. Here is the some bullet point. Number one, limited support for hybrid apps. So APM support both native and hybrid mobile application, but it has limited support for hybrid apps that use web views. Means APM cannot access the content of the web views directly as they are rendered within a separate pro process or context from the main native app. So to address this limitation APM provides a way to switch the automation context from the native app to the web view this allows tester to interact with the web view using standard web automation apps such as web driver or selenium however this switch can be a complex process and there are maybe limitation to the types of interaction that can be performed on the web views depending on the specific platform and browser used additionally web views may have a different performance characteristics and behavior compared to the native app that could leading to the issues such as slower test execution or flickiness so that's the limitation support for hybrid apps and the next next one is slow execution time in some case APM automation test can take longer to execute compared to the manual testing or other automation tools due to the overhead of the APM server and communication with the mobile device and the next one flickiness test APM test can be flicky meaning that they may fail without a clear reason this is very familiar you know very common problem in APM this can be due to factors such as device connectivity network issue or application state the next uh, limitation is limited support for older devices APM may not work with older devices or older version of operating system limiting is compatibility sorry sorry limiting is compatibility 
compatibility with legacy systems such as APM does not support Android version lower than 4.2 we all know and the next one is a complex setup APM require a complex setup process and may require additional tools and configuration for proper functioning and the next one is limited support for some mobile features so APM may not support some mobile features such as NFC biometric authentication or hardware sensor those are very limited you know uh, support that's provided through the APM and the lastly but not the least is a limited access to device hardware APM cannot access some device hardware such as the device camera we all know microphone or GPS location it's making it difficult to automate certain test scenarios if you need to access like microphone or camera or GPS overall despite its limitation APM remains a popular and effective automation tools for a mobile application if you need to support multi operating system like Android iOS you know so that's all for the limitation of the APM let's see the what's the next question explain the design concept of APM correct architecture it's a very common question so here is the architecture you know very high level architecture image of APM so APM APM is an HTTP server written on Node.js platform and the and drives iOS and Android session using web driver JSON wire protocol hence before initialization the APM server Node.js must to be pre-installed on the system when APM is downloaded and installed that then the server is it's set up on your machine that expose a rest api it receives connection it receives connection and a command request from the client from the client code and execute that command on mobile devices like android or ios through automation frameworks such as google ui automator 2 or x execute test which is for iOS automation framework and the same way it responds back in the it responds back with HTTP responses to know more about details about the APM architecture please check the link below in the description I have a totally separate tutorial about the APM architecture more in details so next question what challenges did you face when you test on a real device the same script passed in the emulator whereas it failed in real device due to different screen dimension or size between the emulator and the real devices example any tab or option may be visible in the emulator but in real device you need to scroll down to see that option or tab because of different screen size so the solution is is to select the same size for the emulator and real device or the same you know the devices that would be better to you know to have that to resolve this kind of issue next question what are desired capabilities it's a very common question so if you're familiar with the APM or mobile automation you're supposed to know it so let's see there what are desired capabilities so you, we use desired capabilities class it's a class to set all of our required capabilities or parameters to start an APM session due to use emulator or real device including APK file or your, your iOS file and connection information for APM server to connect with the server the server works according to the capabilities right so it's a, it's very in a very short 
the capabilities nothing it's all about your apk file your 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 android or ios file about your device name your device you know uh, all other information okay so that it can and also the like what is your server and it can find the server it can communicate your server with the your client you know uh, uh, view the next question what is app package and app activity name so app package is a very basic term app package is the technical name of the app which is provided by its developer it's actually a top level package under which all of the code for the app resides for an example app package for YouTube on Android is com.google.android.youtube or whatsapp for the whatsapp the app package is com.whatsapp so if you want to launch whatsapp from APM you need to provide its name as com.whatsapp on the other hand app activity it refers to the dif different functionalities that are provided by the app for example whatsapp provides multiple functionalities such as conversation profile information setting profile photo setting status notification and a lot of other things all these functionalities are represented by different app activities together with these activities every app has a main activity which is sort of the main screen you see when you launch that app for whatsapp it is the chats window we all know when you launch the whatsapp it shows your chat window and for facebook it would be the wall so when you launch the app with APM it needs to know which activity has to be launched and you would need to provide the main activity name the activity which represent the apps main screen okay so that's about the app package and app activity the next question how would you inspect elements in APM it's a very simple question there is a tool name is called APM inspector can help you to spy any element through its locate locate that object the next question this is question number nine how would you identify object uniquely when there are multiple objects with the same class name it is a very common issue and if you're expert, APM expert, you're supposed to know it. So using find elements by class name, whatever the you know the common class name, method and traverse through index and use the appropriate index number to locate the desired element. Here is an example: driver dot find elements by class name. Since is the it is a common class name, use multiple. Uh, locator for multiple objects so you that's why we're using you have to use some find elements and then you got you will have to use exactly the index number of that element that which is related to your object like dot get this is the index number and then whatever the action you want to perform like click okay so next question question number 10 can you start apm server programmatically yes yes we can achieve this with the help of APM Java client as APM driver local service class so in APM Java client there is a class is called APM driver local service class inside this class we can use APM server dot start to start your APM server and there is another another method also is called APM service dot stop method to stop the server automatically or programmatically to see exactly how it works please check the link below in the description i have a complete 
separate tutorial for this. The next one. The next question is how would you identify mobile browser objects? Well, I connect my real device to the dev machine then use Chromecasting or remote devices option to change regular web browser to mobile view and use general locator as expat ID or class name to spy any object. So that's the way you can identify mobile browsers object. The next question. Is APM server different for both Android and iOS? No. APM is a cross platform as we know. So it allow us to write you know test cases against multiple platform like iOS Android using the same API. The next question. How do you ensure whether the device got connected to the your PC or not? Very simple. You can use the command. It's called ADP devices and it will show the list of the devices are connected to the system. The next question. Do you need a server machine to run test on APM? No. We don't need server machine to run test on APM. APM facilitated a two-tier architecture where a test machine connects to a test server running APM and automating the whole thing. We can have APM running on the same machine where our test runs. The next one. What are the most difficult scenarios to, the, to test with APM? It's a very common question. Where is the number of you know uh, bullet point over here? Number one, the most common challenges you know are uh, to uh, automate through the APM or most difficult scenarios. Number one is interaction with native elements. It means interacting with native elements like alerts, pop-ups, and context menus can be challenging as they require a different sets of command compared to testing web element. Number two, handling multiple context. Switching between native and web views can be difficult, especially when the app under the test has multiple web views or nested web views, like web views inside a web views. Number three, testing apps with complex gesture. Testing apps that require complex gestures such as like pinch, zoom, sweep, and drag and drop can be challenging as it requires precise control over the device screen. It's not easy like when you need a very precise control on the screen to you know perform some of the action gesture action like pinch right. So it have to be very specific control right and it's not easy or it's very difficult you know kind of difficult you know to do automate you know or perform that kind of action through the automation script next one test app with network connectivity issues testing apps that really on network connectivity can be difficult as network issues can affect the performance of the app and the test result and the number five testing apps on multiple platform and devices testing the same app on multiple platform and devices can be challenging as different platform and devices have different capabilities like requirement screen size and resolution which can impact the way app behaves and the lastly but not the least testing apps with third party integration testing app that rely on third party integration such as social media or payment gateway can be challenging as they require a different sets of test cases and configuration compared to testing stand alone apps so those are the very common but it's the difficult scenarios to test with apm next question while using APM, can I run my test in multi-threaded environment? Yes, 
You can run the test in multi-threaded environment, but you have to ensure that no more than one test runs at the same time against the same APM server. Next question, list of common errors in APM you faced. Here is the very common, you know, there is a four common errors that we face always when you uh, script the APM. So to give an answer for this question, you have to give the solution also. Here is the number one. The following desired capabilities are needed but not provided. Like if you have the, you know, uh, device name, your platform name, like capabilities, some of the information from the uh, desired capabilities are missing, like device name, platform name, that time you will for, you know, face this kind of error, like desired capabilities are needed but not provided. So you have to update your desired capabilities with the right uh, info. Number two error, could not find ADB. To solve this issue, make sure to set the Android underscore home environment variable with the Android SDK root directory path. And number three error, like session not created exception is a very, very common issue that we almost we all face when you write a script for APM. And it means a new session could not be created. To solve this issue, there is a solution by rebooting the your emulator or simulator not just closing it and opening again but selecting the call boot now option in virtual device manager from the android studio so there follow my uh, there's a link below in the description how it works and how to resolve this issue i have a totally separate tutorial about this please check the description below link and number four, failure to locate DOM element means unable to spy element. Double check to make sure the element is uniquely located. Like a lot of times, you know, the same uh, multiple object have the same class. So then at that time you have to use, you can use the same class, but you can use the, you know, their index number to uniquely identify, locate that object. So. You know there is a different other way also you can traverse from parent to child to uh, uniquely identify overall you have to uniquely identify your object so those are the very you know the common errors that we face during the APM execution next question what debugging tools do you use in the debugging process no tools other than we can use logs to see the cause of the issues for android we can use monitor.bat files for the debugging process and for ios we can use iphone configuration utility so we don't need any in you know stand alone tools or separate tools debugging you know the process in apm the next one the next question is what are the risks of automation testing this is very generic question so here is the very high level some of the uh, bullet points availability of the of skill resources means programming skills you know familiar with APM different framework capabilities to adapt to new technologies and the next uh, point would be the initial cost for APM is high like purchasing tool, hiring, you know, the proper resources, training and maintenance. And the next step, uh, point would be not a stable application. It means if your application is not a stable or UI or UX is changing, you know, continuously, better not to think about automation because that time your maintenance cost is, is going to be very, very high. So next question, what are the problem using cloud resource? So you can execute your APM through the cloud resources, but is there any problem or what are the problem? Let's see. It's a subscription model. So cloud resource is like, you know, browser stacks is a cloud resource or you can run through the AWS, right? So 
what are the problem or you know uh, we all know the benefit of using cloud resources but what are the problems the problem is like subscription those are the subscription based model it means you know it's a high costing it it has dependency with internet connectivity so if you if you don't have a strong internet or high speed connection so your test execution will be fail and automation cannot be used outside of the framework if you specifically use any cloud resource like you know browser stacks right uh, uh, just I give you an examples so you cannot use you know outside framework so those are the limitation or problems when you use cloud resource even though it has lots of benefits if you don't have you know a uh, uh, number of uh, real mobile devices or if you need to run on multiple operating systems and multiple browsers so cloud resources are great option you know to cover to give you the better coverage in, in regards to different operating system right and different uh, mobiles at the same time or parallel testing and the last question I believe this is the number 20 what's your preference using real devices versus simulator or or emulator well real devices are always best to use to get appropriate error but it may not detect otherwise because need to configure the device smartly with the APM server so that it can detect the device S sometimes ADB or Android debuggers can change this connection from the device even it remains plugged in and it can cause your test to fail to handle this issue you can write a module which resets the ADB after sometimes to reconnect to the devices okay so that's all was 20 top or very common interview question in regards APM or mobile automation thank you so much you have a good one bye bye